Thank you, Lord. Yeah. You know, I was just um, sitting down when we were just worshipping at the moment. Is this all looking right? Yeah. It's all good? Okay. So I was just... <laughs> You'll have to bear with me. Um, I do have a word from <laughs> which I feel the Lord's laid upon my heart. But as I was just sitting down and worshipping this morning, um, something just came to my mind. Um, I just want to share that. I thought I really do have an addiction this morning. It's a good addiction. I am addicted to Jesus. Yeah. So I want to know how many of you here can really say, that you are addicted to Jesus. You know, everything that we have in this world will fade away eventually. The only thing that will stand at the end of the day is our relationship with Jesus. Right. One day we're all going to go to heaven. I believe eternity is our home. And all that's going to matter is whether we love Jesus, whether we lived our lives pleasing to Him. I'm in no way trying to say that I'm perfect. I'm far from perfect. My family will will verify that. I'm really far from perfect. I have a long journey to go, but I really, really do love Jesus. As a family, we love Jesus. We try to bring up our kids to love the Lord. Okay? So as I was praying this morning, and over the last few weeks, I was like, God, what would you like me to share at Eden Hill? For Mark and me, this is a really special church. We've been here a long time, nearly, nearly nine and a half years, Mark. Yeah, a long time we've been at the church. And this is family. Pastor Steve and Wendy will always be family to us. So I said, what would you like us to share? And so I was praying and I was seeking the Lord um, just with direction. Um, now when the Lord speaks to me, and I probably would have said this earlier, I have no creative ability. I was an accountant, so everything is numbers, everything is boxes, every box has to tick. But when God speaks to me, He will speak to me in visual. He will speak to me in a picture. And then he will unravel that picture. I just want to acknowledge Kerry this morning. I just thank you, Kerry, for just sowing into my life. You know, as I would with Pastor Steve, many, many times you've been an encouragement. I just want to acknowledge you this morning, um, you know, the scriptures that you've spoken in. So thank you for your, just your encouragement. Um, but God will speak to me in visual. The visual that he gave me this morning, or not this morning, for the last few weeks, I'm going to share in a moment, is of a bird. Have any of you seen a sparrow? I wonder if any of you have seen a sparrow. Yeah. So coming from India, sparrows is a very common bird. And so as I was preparing my message, every, everything that was happening in and around my life was around the sparrow. I would listen to a song, and I was saying this to Mark, I would listen to a song that alluded to the sparrow. I got a, I got a picture, a visual of just the word sparrow. And so automatically, I would say, okay, God, what are you saying to me about the sparrow? So if you would just go with me, I have two key scriptures to share this morning. One's from the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 27 onwards. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will but the very hairs of your head are numbered do not fear therefore you are of more value than many sparrows I just want to stop with that for a moment you know as we read that scripture we know Jesus is talking here in the book of Matthew in the beginning, it starts with Jesus sending out his apostles. The scripture actually says the 12 apostles are sent. They were called disciples earlier, but from chapter 10, they were called apostles. Apostles came with an authority. So we just, if we just want to go back into what happened at that time. So Jesus is sending out in Matthew 10. He's sending out the apostles and he's saying to the apostles, when you go out, I want you to go with power. Because you will have that authority on your life to cast out demons. 
you will be able to see the sick healed. So he's actually giving them a mandate. He goes on to explain to them, he says, do not go to, the, to anyone, and, but go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He goes on to explain to them about their mandate and what their calling would be, but how hard it would be in their ministry and what they are called to do. In Matthew chapter 10, there are about four times that I picked up where the word fear, he addresses fear in, in his um, apostles. The first time he says it comes up somewhere in chapter 9, in verse 19, when he says, but when they deliver you, de deliver you up, do not worry, which is kind of like fear, of what, what you should speak, for I will give you the utterance, he says to his apostles. So the first time he's telling them, do not worry. He again speaks to them further down in chapter, in verse 26, where he says, for my namesake, you will have a lot of hardship, but you must endure, so do not worry. The next time he speaks it in the scripture, which I've just spoken of, he says, do not fear those who can kill the body, but can't kill the soul, but fear him who can kill both body and soul. And the last time he says is, do not fear, therefore you are more valuable than the sparrow. So I just want to speak a little bit about the sparrow. You know, coming from India, every time we saw sparrows, sparrows were always in large numbers. I know in the book of, um, in the book of Psalms, when I was uh, researching and studying, I know it speaks of the lone sparrow sitting on the housetop. But sparrows, when, when we were in India, if you can ask the ones from India, that they were always in, in groups, they were in flocks together. The, um, the dictionary, um, the Easton's dictionary actually mentioned it about the offering that was given by the very poor. So in the Old Testament times, when they would take offerings into the, into the temple, those that could afford would take you know, the, the goat and the bull and the sheep or whatever. But in the, in, for the ones who were really poor, they would actually go down to the marketplace and they would buy themselves some sparrows as an offering because it was so cheap. It was a bird that had really no value, if I can say it that way. But if I want to continue with that, I wouldn't say it didn't have value, maybe not to you and me, but the scripture reminds us that in the sight of God, he says, not one sparrow falls to the ground without the father knowing. And he draws a comparison to you and me and he says, are you not, are you more, are you more worthy than those sparrows? So Jesus is actually drawing a comparison here to the apostles back then, but I want to build a bridge and to bring it into our context today. What does that mean for you and me? What does that mean for you and me? What does the scripture say when it says the very hairs on your head are numbered? Do not be afraid, you are worth more than many sparrows. Jesus is giving us a very clear message here, as he did the apostles back then. You know, we go through seasons in life. This year has been a, has been a, um, a tricky year for Mark and me in many respects. You know, we've journeyed, we've journeyed with Pastor Steve and, and um, Wendy through, through this year. There's been a lot of uncertainty. There's been seasons when we've had to make some, you know, difficult decisions, seasons when we've had to speak about lots of things, pray about lots of things. And I think this reminder to me, even in these last few weeks, as I was preparing this message to bring to you today is that we don't have to worry. Worry comes to each and every one of us. For me, worry is my immediate defense mechanism. If something should go wrong in my life, I know, I know the scripture reminds me not to worry. I know Philippians 4 reminds us do not be anxious about anything. But I get anxious. So for me, the illustration of the sparrow and the reference to the sparrow had a real meaning and real depth for me because for me it drew me to that drew me to that place of understanding that if god can take care of that one sparrow that falls to the ground how much more can he take care of us yeah. right. how much more is a soul worth to jesus this morning yes, right. the scripture reminds us in matthew 10 like i said earlier the very hairs on our head are numbered even this morning, I was reminded, reminded of that. I'm sure all of us who were doing our hair this morning would have lost a few hairs in the process. <laughs> Some of us may not have. <laughs> but I think, you know, Jesus is reminding us that all of us, you know, the very hairs on our head are numbered this morning. In scripture, there are two things I want to draw your attention today about the sparrow. The first thing is, in God's eyes, is on everything, even the most insignificant 
I don't know how many of us this morning have felt insignificant. How many of us this morning have battled with our own struggles? How many of us this morning have thought, God, are you really going to come through? Are you really as faithful as you say that you are? I love Wendy's testimony this morning because I can't imagine that transition that she went through when she would have wondered lots of questions. Are you really going to come through? But if we, rem if we look at the life of the sparrow and we see that the scripture reminds us not just in the book of Matthew. In the, Ma in the book of Matthew, they speak about two sparrows. In the book of Luke, he actually alludes to five sparrows. In, as I was doing my research, apparently when they were doing it in the, in, the market, in, the, in, the, um, in the market, when they were selling sparrows, because it was so cheap, the person who was selling the sparrow would sell four sparrows and they would throw in the fifth sparrow for two farthings. Apparently two farthings was nothing much. So the sparrows actually in the scripture to you and me have, may have, like it doesn't have any value, but to Jesus it does. Jesus says not one sparrow falls to the ground. How much more value have I placed on your lives? than that sparrow. So I want to assure you today that no matter how insignificant you may feel, whether in your calling, whether in your work spot, whether in your family, whether in your situations, no matter what you're going through, whatever the transition may be, that you are valuable to Jesus. More than the sparrows, he reminds us. The next thing I want to draw about the sparrows is that God's care for us continues. It's not something that he gives us today. And if we make a mistake tomorrow, he will change or drop or take back. His promise and his care for us will always continue. Yes, we may not understand. There are certain things that we go through and we will never fully understand. But can we trust Jesus in the process? This is not our work. Our trust and our faith walk and us handing over our worries to Jesus is not about us. It's about the power of the Holy Spirit that works through us. I love the scripture in Galatians 2.20. Paul says, it is no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. This life that I now live, I live having faith in the Son of God that loved me and gave himself up for me. What, a, what an amazing scripture. What an amazing piece of scripture. How often have we doubted? How often have I doubted? The reminder to you and me today is let's not doubt. Let's put our trust in Jesus. Amen. There's another scripture that God spoke to me in, that the Spirit of God was revealing to me alongside Matthew 10, and I just want to read that in a moment. It's actually from the book of John. John 6. Do you just want to go with me to John 6? Verses 35. I'm just going to read. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up on the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up on the last day. The Jews then complained about him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose mother and father we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Do not murmur among yourselves. No one has come to me unless the father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, And they shall all be taught by God. Therefore everyone who has heard, and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. 
I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness, and they are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. I love that scripture in John 6, such a profound scripture. I just want to draw our attention to that scripture for a moment. Jesus is there talking to them just after he's done the, the miracle of the, the five loaves and the two fish. Just after that, he's walking on water. And then he challenges them with the scripture. He challenges them with the truth of who he is. He says to his disciples and to those who were there, gathered there at that moment, he says, the, the bread that you ate when Moses gave you the manna felt and edified and built your physical body. But the bread that I give you, you sh if you eat of it, you shall not hunger and you shall not thirst. And they were confused. I'm sure they were thinking, so are you trying to say that the manna that, that we had in the wilderness was not okay? Are you trying to say that to us? But Jesus was not alluding to that. He was saying the manna that you ate was only dealing with your physical needs. But if you want your worries to be settled, if you want your anxieties to be settled, if you want your life to be in order and for everything to come into place, there are two things that he highlights in the scripture that I want to bring to you. He says in chapter 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes on me shall never thirst. Two things he tells his disciples. You've got to come to me and you've got to believe. Really, really important. Many times in our life, we want to claim scriptures. We want to do things. We say, oh, you know what? Jesus is for me and everything. We can say everything and we can do everything and we can read from the word of God. But we haven't, if we haven't accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, if we haven't come to him and continue to come to him and ask his Holy Spirit to do his work in our lives and in our hearts and have repentant hearts, no matter what we say and no matter what we do, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's about Jesus and accepting his sacrifice that he done on the cross. So he challenges and he says, you have to come to me and you have to believe in me. So why I bring the scripture is because when I was, when I was you know, reading about the sparrows and I was, God was bringing to my mind about my, you know, my concerns and my issues and what I needed to bring to him and the importance of the sparrow to Jesus, I was reminded of John 6. And I just want to bring us back to that. I just want to bring us back to Jesus. Because sometimes we can take a message and we can give a good message and we can be all about, you know, do not worry and he cares for the sparrows and everything. But I just want, I want to take a bend in the road and I just want to bring us back to Jesus this morning because it is about Jesus. I love the songs that they sang this morning. Jesus is the center. So everything we do. So as we journey through this year, Mark and me have come to that place of realizing that it is about Jesus at the end of the day. It is about sowing and doing what the Lord wants us to do. How often do we go on what our thinking is or our perceptions of things? But the Lord had to challenge us. He had to challenge and he had to mold and he had to break away some set patterns that we had established in our lives so that we can come to him and say, you know what, God, I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you in those areas where I need to repent of areas where I've probably done too much religion. I've said I loved you. I've read my Bible. I've done everything right. Repent of areas where we've had to break away some negative thinking. Repent of areas where we haven't done what's right in the sight of God. And we still, as I'm sure each of you are, a work in progress. So as I conclude this morning, I just want to Bring us back to that scripture in Matthew 10. I know my message is not very long. It's a simple message. Jesus is the better bread. Jesus is the new covenant that we have. Jesus is our security, our guide, our protector. He's our hope. 
in the midst of perplexity. He's unchanged and he's certain. He is the bread of life. To eat this bread means to appropriate Christ as one's life. And through the power of the Spirit, each of us this morning have a challenge. Have we accepted really? Are we willing for the Holy Spirit to challenge us? Are we willing for the Holy Spirit to work in and through our lives? It's not easy. It's been really hard. Are we willing to surrender? Are we willing to say, you know what, God, as you cared for the sparrow, you do care for you, for us. God is calling, I know Mark and me as pastor, you know, shared and we will share in a little while. He's calling us almost to step out of the boat. Not an easy place to be in. When Mark and me were praying yesterday, I had this, I had this beautiful vision again, you know, of us, of us kind of stepping out of the boat. It's not easy. So I want to thank Pastor Steve and Wendy for the opportunity to preach this morning. I'm just going to conclude with um, just Paul playing uh, the simple tune of this old hymn, the sparrow, and I'm just going to read um, from what I've found. In 1904, a songwriter, Mrs. Sevilla Martin, went to visit a bedridden friend in Elmira, New York. Mrs. Martin asked the woman, if she ever got discouraged because of her physical condition, her friend quickly responded, Mrs. Martin, how can I be discouraged when my heavenly father watches over each little sparrow and I know he loves and cares for me? On a journey back home, Mrs. Martin completed the writing of her new text, which has been a source of much encouragement to many of God's people. And these are the words. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me. Let not your heart be troubled, his tender word I hear. And resting on his goodness, I lose my doubts and fears. Though by the path he leadeth, but one step I may see. His eye is on the sparrow. I know he watches me. Whenever I am tempted, whenever clouds arise, when songs give place to sighing, when hope within me dies, I draw the closer to him. From care he sets me free. His eye is on the sparrow. I know he watches me. So as I conclude this morning, I just want to thank God for the opportunity to share the word this morning. I just want to thank each one of you here for listening. I pray that this word, I know it's a simple word. For me, it was a word that really settled in my heart. It was close to my heart. I'm not sure what's happening in your lives. I'm not sure what your, the beginning of your life. I'm not sure where your future is going. I titled my message, Yet to God. You know, and I had, um, it's on, in my first slide. Because I don't know what your, um, the initial part of your life was, but if you take anything away this morning, I want you to take these three words, yet to God. Yet to God, you are valuable. But you don't know my past. I don't care what your past is. Yet to God, you have a bright future. But you don't know what's going on in my family situation. You don't know some of the struggles that I have. And you know what? I may never know. But yet to God, you're valuable. And you may tell me, but you don't know this transition that I'm going through, my troubled kids, or whatever it may be, I don't know what, or the financial struggles I'm having, you don't know. Again, I don't know, but I just want to take those three words again. Yet to God, you are more valuable than a sparrow. A sparrow's a small little bird. I wish I could have brought a little, you know, a little thing for you to see. Just about that big, that small. 
Can you imagine, I was looking at a YouTube clip the other day and they zoomed out, they showed, they showed a person standing and then they zoomed out right out. And it was like, you know, this person, the way God's created the universe, it's a beautiful clip. And you're like a dot, you're like a dot. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, if I'm a dot, the sparrow must be a dot of a dot, you're really tiny. Yeah. But then one of the preachers said, when I was reading, he said, uh, it was a funny way he said, and Mark said, don't you say that? But I said, no, I'm not saying it in the Bible. He says, not one sparrow dies without the father going to its funeral. I mean, that's amazing the way he said it, you know, just a little sparrow. But the scripture reminds us in, in, um, in Matthew, you know, he says, I care for those sparrows. So I'm just going to condense and complete my message. So if you, if you want to take anything away from my message, I want you to take those three words. I don't know what the dots are before. I don't know what the dots are going to be behind. There's a lot of uncertainty, I know. But if I can just challenge you this morning through the power of the Spirit, that yet to God, you are more valuable than those sparrows. And with Jesus, we have everything we need. Eternity is our home. We're going to have water baptism in a moment. I love that. Eternity is our home. In this world, the Bible, Scripture says you will have troubles, you will have tribulations. But be of good cheer, I have overcome. And we stand today not in our righteousness, our righteousness but filthy rags, the Scripture says. We stand in His righteousness. We stand in His authority. We stand knowing that the power of God, as Paul said in Galatians 2.20, lives within us. So as we finish this morning and as we finish off this whole um, message and come to the conclusion of this, His eye is on the sparrow and I know He watches you. Yet to God, you are more valuable than those sparrows. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to pray. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Father, that as we come to you this morning, Father God, we can come with lives and hearts surrendered, Father God, and know that we are more valuable than those sparrows. Father God, you have a plan and a purpose for each one of us gathered here, Father. I pray, Father God, that you would just bless that through the power of your Spirit, Father God, that you would work in our lives and in our hearts, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God, that as we come, Lord Jesus, may we come knowing and believing, Father God. I thank you for that challenge to us this morning, saying that you are the bread of life. May we come, Father God, and believe and stand in your righteousness this morning. I pray for each and every one here this morning, Father God. Father, I don't know the past. I don't know the future. All I know is that to you, they matter. That you have a plan and a purpose bigger for them, Father God, that they can ever dream of or imagine, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Father God, that when those moments come, Father, when they feel like they're treading on water and they're going to sink. I pray that you will reassure them, Father God, with those three simple words, yet to God, you're more valuable than those sparrows. I just speak a blessing upon them, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you will give them the desires of their heart, Father. I pray for their family situations, Father, that you would bless, that you would keep that you would fix, that you would mold, that you would repair, and that you will reveal to them how much you love them, Father. We thank you for the blessing and the relationship we have with you this morning, Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, we give you all the praise. We pray this in Jesus' name, believing. Amen.